Mitchell Creasy. My name is Kim Smith. We'll be hosting the five-week event. This is the first week of five in a five-week competition that will end in California at the 2012 World CrossFit Games. Uh, Mitch, you want to tell us a little bit about why we're here? Well, uh, as you said, Kim, this is the first in the open, first event in the open series. Uh, tonight, tonight's event is a seven-minute burpee challenge. As many burpees as you can in seven minutes. Uh, we're going to have three heats going throughout the night. Uh, during those heats, we're going to have four to five athletes going, testing themselves to do as many burpees as possible within that seven minutes. And amazing things do happen here on Friday nights. A burpee is a simple thing about getting your body weight up and down. A very fundamental natural movement that's found in life, and they are going to do it as many times as they can in seven minutes. I'm, I'm very excited to be here tonight. Uh, this very special thing, the, the open. People put it out on the line. And that's the whole idea. And you mentioned athletes. Mitchell, we have uh, Miltonians here and uh, people from the extended area from all over, from all walks of life, from all fitness levels. We have all ages. We probably have age 15 to 65, would you say, this year? People have just come out of foundations, foundations being a, a five-week program, five classes where you just learn the movements to people who have been doing this for years, coming in to compete all at one time. And they're going seven minutes as hard as they can. Are they going to get uncomfortable? Very uncomfortable. Full body movement, there's nothing worse. Can anyone do it? Everyone can do it. That's right. I can do it. You can do it. We did it today. We did it this morning. Very painful. That's true. So if you would like to come and see any of the events, they're being held here every week. Uh, tonight being the first night, come on, enjoy. It's free to come, bring the kids, bring the family, free food, and you can watch some CrossFitters in action and maybe you can be the next one next year. So we are going to head now, I'm very excited, to the first heat on the floor for the seven minute AMRAP. They're just about to count them in. 10 seconds. Special heat today, we have, uh, we have three family members, a dad, a daughter, and a son, all competing at one time on the floor as we speak, as well as Liam, my man here in the yellow dog t-shirt, just come out of foundations. Good Liam. athlete. Yeah, he's a great athlete. He came to us, he's one of those guys that came to us as a, a young guy, a young athlete who works out regularly in the gym, looking for a little challenge, and he's founded here at CrossFit. He has literally only been CrossFitting for probably a full month now, and he's, and he's participating in the CrossFit Games, which I think is fantastic. Let's chat about the family you were talking about. The Chambry family, they're an interesting crowd. Uh, by that, I mean they're fantastic. Um, George and Carm found this place maybe about three years ago when it just opened. And uh, they were looking for a change in their lifestyle. They came in, they brought the kids. They have three wonderful children. Uh, a few of them in university right now. One is still in high school. All former athletes. Uh, they came in, they took to it, and here they are tonight. That's right. I remember, so we've got Vicky in the purple shirt. That. Couldn't do it. No. Couldn't do it. Just about killed him. And now he's flying past me sometimes on those 400 meters. One thing, uh, the, the, the fifth person in the heat right now, uh, Jessica Evans, a member of Firepower's competitive team. Um, a lot of gyms don't send their athletes blind along the road to the games. They set them up with a, a regimented training schedule. Jess is on the team. She partakes in that weekly. She's really up for training lately for this event. So tonight is the first the first time she'll be proving, or uh, showcasing, I should say, what she's done. Yeah, Jess is a great young competitor, and she's improved a lot over the past year, so she's trying to get to those games in California. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the WAD itself and about the burpee itself. What are the right, there are rules and regulations that CrossFit headquarters in California puts out that every athlete must adhere to, and we will not count a repetition, it will not count the competition unless a few things happen. First of all, the hips and 
chest need to touch the ground. You need to be lying completely flat on the surface below you. That's number one. If that doesn't happen, there's no sense in proceeding to get up to your feet. Second thing that needs to happen is we need full extension in the hip. To show that, to demonstrate full extension, both hands need to touch the apparatus that is stationed six, six inches above your hands. That's right. out throughout the day so far. Uh, myself, I chose a strategy that works not so well, but that's fine. Um, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady is the name of the game here tonight. Uh, a medium pace burpee for seven minutes becomes taxing pretty quickly. A lot of these athletes have a very competitive nature. They're going to want to come in and they want to go as fast as possible right from the beginning to try and get as many reps. So it's really important to calm them down and say, no, no, let's take, a, let's take a second, use your entire body, use your knees, use your hips, snake a little bit. Snaking, sorry, is when the chest comes off the ground before the hips to get up onto your feet That's to right. the apparatus. That's right, and I can see we're about the athlete's head. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you in the workout? What needs to be done to obtain the number that you so desire? And let, letting them know it's okay. You got this. You got this. Exactly. A big thing with CrossFit is the mental game. Yeah. There comes a point in every workout where you start telling yourself, no, I can't do this. Why am I doing this? This is silly. I'd like to give up. Maybe the couch would be a little more comfortable right now. That's right. Once that voice creeps in, it's the judge's role to come in and say, no, no, you can, you're okay, you're going to survive. That's right. And one big thing that we haven't mentioned yet is what's going to happen is all these athletes are registered online. This is a worldwide competition. So after you're completing your workout, you go online, you log in, and you enter your score. Right and now, this is happening in Europe. Right, right now, now, this is happening in Africa. Africa. That's States of America. Okay, and no, wasn't it? Uh, that is incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. She was from Iceland. Iceland. Very cool. Yeah, so you can do these workouts anywhere. These, some of these people are around the world are competing at home, videotaping their workout and sending it in as a as a as an important official score. So I'm gonna input my score later tonight and I'm gonna compare myself to women of my age all around the world, which is pretty cool. For the viewers at home, Kim, how many reps did you obtain? Today. I got 88, my goal was 100, and sometimes the best laid plans, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, a similar situation to me, I came out with a score of 92. I also would have liked 100. That's right, yeah. Observers jumping in and encouraging these athletes. As you can see, the crowd is starting to get very loud. Everybody in this room knows exactly what it takes to get this job done. That's right. Their quads are seized up, their lungs are giving way. They don't want to think anymore. They, some of them probably can't even see. But every rep counts. Just look at these efforts out there. Look how fast they're going. Right at the end. One All the way time. to the finish. Time. Oh, gosh. Wow. Wow. I know. You know, I see this and I think, thank God I did it this morning. I know, me too. That's right. Now, so we've got some of them laying on the ground. They're highly uncomfortable. You don't see this kind of effort inside the walls of a regular gym. A lot of people try to cover it up that this doesn't happen at CrossFit. Everybody likes to high-five each other and, and give a big hug, but that happens, but after you're off the ground. Usually you sprawl, face down, back down, sweating profusely, cursing. 
It feels great. It's great I just cathartic. look at these athletes on the ground, but they've, they've chosen to be in here trying to get their, to their highest level of fitness, and honestly, this, this is the way. You couldn't talk to a person inside the walls of the gym right now that doesn't feel the same way. No, yes, exactly. Nobody wants to hear anything anyone has to say as soon as they're done. They want to be left alone in peace to roll around in agony. That's personally my favorite part of a workout. Yeah, and, it's done. and the other thing is I want you to notice as the evening goes on how many different kinds of athletes, competitors we have in here. So in that, we had all age ranges. We had two generations competing in that in that heat. Um, that was a strong heat. I'm interested to know what their scores will be. Yes, uh, interesting you say uh, the two generations. A little thing about the Shembri family. Um, before the kids always used to fight for the front seat to and from wherever they were going. Now the front seat is determined by the best score in the workout. Oh, I didn't know yes, that. Yes, yes. Oh, that's good. They so sometimes good. George has to sit in the back of the minivan. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I, you know what, when I look at that family, I do know that it can cross the generations, and uh, I hope that my kids one day grow up and are CrossFitters as well. Uh, interesting point. A lot of gyms now have CrossFit kids programs, and It'll be interesting to see how, as the years progress and compile, how those kids who have been in the gym since age five and six, through osmosis, what they pick up, and their definition of fitness, That's how it's right. different from their parents. The next generation, I agree, because we didn't have CrossFit when we were younger. No. 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 So now what you're seeing around the gym, you guys, is we're getting ready for the second heat, and they're starting to measure our next heat, our next athletes that we'll introduce to you in just a moment, making sure that the ring or bar It's an interesting point. A lot of people come in nervous, nervous, nervous. They go, they might have to go to the bathroom, they might have to barf. That's how it goes. Anyway, we'll come back in a second to see how these, these guys fare in heat four. Yeah, we'll let them set up and we'll be right back with heat number two. ready for heat number two. I will have all the scores uh, posted uh, on the screen for you a little bit later, but I do know that the top score in that last heat was 111. That's the number to beat. Crazy. That's a crazy number. So that was a good job by uh, one of our trainers, actually, Daniel Sonsini, who's trying to head to the games this year. Heat two is just getting ready. We've got Pino and Kathy Porciello, who are a couple, married couple here. Their children are here watching. Uh, Levi, Ashley Mule, Sherry, Kat, and Tara. And we'll be cheering those guys on when they start. They're going to count us down in just about five seconds here. So whenever they're ready, they'll go. Um, the energy in here, you guys, is pretty incredible. You can hear it building as the seven minutes come to a close. Palpable. Yep. And, uh, and then you can sit back, have a drink these athletes, and just watch the rest and encourage the rest of your friendly, friendly competitors that you kind of battle against every day in here. What's at the potluck? I don't know. I haven't been over to the potluck table yet. It great, looks pretty good. Great thing about these, these CrossFit gyms is a lot of times we have people bring in food for the spectators to enjoy as they watch the workout. As the workout begins, here we go. And it started. That's right. And it's all healthy food. So if you do want to come by, um, contact the gym at 905-864-9941. Friday nights for the next four weeks, today being number one and four more weeks. And there's free food and lots of good friendly competition. Come check out what CrossFit's all about. You won't be sorry. Okay, so we're in. We're in. Here we are. Heat two. We have, as you mentioned, we have Pino and Kathy, a married couple on the floor right now. Kathy, a math teacher. And High Pino, school. a genius. Yes, pretty much. Yes. He's one smart guy. Now, these two um, came to our gym for a hockey fundraiser for their son's hockey team. The next day I got a call from Pino said, when do I start? Book me in right away. And her, his uh, wife, Kathy, wasn't too far after. Now they've got both their kids, uh, their, their family that lives here in town, uh, both their kids are crossfitting as well. And Pino says sometimes he'll catch his daughter doing a workout in the, in the garage. 
His son cheats a little bit sometimes. Does he? Yeah, you've workouts. coached him. Yeah, little, young guy. Yeah. Young guy. He's a little guy. That happens. That's right. And Pino's also a, a hockey coach here in town. And um, he has a, a high demanding job. And he still makes time for CrossFit. He says he's never felt better. I think a bit, you touched on uh, an important, uh, important uh, point there, Kim. That I forgot right now. What's that? Okay. Yeah, I forgot. Okay, when you remember it, yeah. interject. We'll come back to that. Pino lost. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, CrossFit becomes a part of your life. Yeah, it does. It, it becomes so much more than, than I have to go to the gym today, I have to work out. It's social. You, yeah. you know, people message you out throughout the day. Did you do the WAD? Did you do the WAD stands for workout of the day? That's uh, right. Did you do the WAD? What was your score? How many rounds did you get? <laughs> what weight did you use? You become accountable for your workouts. Yeah. And you should be accountable for your life too. So it just crosses over. There's lots of metaphors for life. Yep. Um, to get that high level of fitness that you know that you're rewarded for in life, it, it's hard. It takes hard work. Just like anything that's worth having in in, in real life takes hard work. And that's what we do in here. Blood, sweat, and tears. It's all worth it. People keep coming back for more. So we're doing something right. Also in this heat, we have a few members of the competitive team. Yep. Uh, Sherry Stevenson, Kat Senkar. Uh, like Jess from the heat before, they've been working their tails off for about the past three or four months. Tightened up their diets, increased their training. Been on a weightlifting program, strength building program, lifting a lot of weight. Uh, Sherry was a competitive gymnast for the, uh, about 15 years, so her body awareness is extremely Extreme, at an extremely high level. That's a personal trainer, so she's no slouch in the gym. She knows exactly what muscle groups to use, how to use them, and how best to fuel them. Yeah, she, yeah both those great competitors. Sherry, uh, in the black uh, tank top and the black shorts over there and the blue shoes, she's also a mother of two. Her husband also attends the gym, and so do their two kids. And just to mention about gymnastics, uh, there are three main parts of CrossFit that we sort of delve into every day. Uh, one of those is gymnastics. One of them is cardio or metabolic conditioning, what some people would think of as running or rowing, uh, jumping, pulling, and the other is weightlifting. So there's three main components. Those three main components combined make up CrossFit, help us get to the level we are at today, what you're seeing in the gym right now. That's right. So some days we lift a lot of heavy weights, some, well, some days we don't lift any weights at all, and that's just like this competition tonight, seven minutes burpees. That's a body weight exercise, get up, get down as many times as you can. So it's really, really cool to see this as the first workout. Simple, you can do it anywhere. Uh, you could do it in your garage, you could do it in a, in a soccer field, yep. you could do it in the hallway at your high school. Yeah, you can do it anywhere. Wherever you like. Minimal equipment. Minimal equipment, anytime, anywhere. That's right, maximum maximum results. I just want to talk about Ashley Mule, who's beside Pino over there. She's wearing a blue Reebok uh, t-shirt. Ashley actually is coming back from uh, an injury that she actually Sustained last year, last at, year. At this time. That's right. So she had it last year. Um, it was a finger and hand injury that bothered her for a lot, but she's battled back and she's back in the games again this year. Beside her is Tara in the purple tank top. Tara's fairly new to the gym. She started out just coming in and being a little bit unsure about CrossFit. Oh, I'm not sure if that's for me. I'd like to just start with personal training. And eventually, of course, um, has turned into a CrossFitter herself. And I noticed really big changes in her body shape. And she's becoming quite an athlete. Absolutely. Yeah. She comes in, she, she puts forth a, a top-notch effort day in and day out that she's here, really taking the time to learn the skills. A lot of people think you can come into a gym like this. And you, you've worked out before, so I, I, I've run, I, I, I've, I've used machines, I, I, maybe I've lifted free weight. Different animal, and you really have to take the time to learn the bits and pieces of the skill to comprise the entire movement. That's Once true. that starts happening, then results come. Yes, and then the results are quick after the that. Results are quick. Really quick. We had, like Pino, he probably lost about 40 pounds in his first few months of cross when he couldn't believe how good he felt. Couldn't but he feels about a decade younger, he says. So he's maybe we'll interview him later. He's the first one to tell anybody to get their butts inside this gym. Like anything worth it in life, it's a process. Yeah, exactly. And that Mitch helps me with that, or you're in a regular class. Every day when I come in for my 9.30 workout, let's say I know it's going to be one hour total, front to back, um, and I'm going to have a coach pushing me for either uh, intensity or technique, whatever I need. As they come to the final minute. 
into the this workout. You're gonna see him start to pick up the intensity or just try to maintain. Look at Pino's making a sprint here. Now he's got a little pep in the step, kicking those legs oh, back, yeah. getting that chest right down. This is where everything you got left, you leave it on the floor. Breathe later, breathe later. You can last for 45 more seconds. Absolutely. Cherry Stevenson getting down and up, snaking a little bit, but that's all right. Yep. She's just trying to keep the pace consistent. These coaches, these judges are trying to keep these guys moving as fast as they can. They only now have 30 seconds left. There you go. You can see the coaches really encouraging. I tell you, Kim, this last 30 seconds is as tough as it comes. I know. Legs are burning. Over there, Levi, we have, he's a fantastic, um, got a great cardiovascular endurance. He's going to have a high number, I think. High number. He could be the one to beat after this heat. I think he will. I bet you he'll beat 111. 10, 10 seconds left. I know. Lots of great energy, you guys. Um, so come down here any Friday night. We never know what the workout's going to be. They announce it every Wednesday. So every every week, you're going to see something completely different. Thanks for joining us. We'll get heat number three ready for you. Sisters, Jen and Michelle, Jen and Michelle Turtle. Turtle, not actually their last name. Nicknamed that from day one because of how slow they went. Now you might think that's a bit mean. Could be. We never actually gave them that nickname. They deemed themselves Turtle. That's true. When they started, their nickname became Turtle. They were so slow on the workouts. They have improved so much. I legitimately thought that was their last name for the first year and a half that I knew them there. So. <laughs> Lisa Turtle, Saved by the Bell. That's a legitimate last name. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And actually, Jen, uh, the sister in the yellow shoes over there, who's who's going to compete in a sec, she's uh, also on the competitive team. The competitive so she's team. improved. Extremely strong, extremely strong athlete. A amazing lifter. Who else do we have? We got Michelle Turtle, her sister, an athletic therapist. Uh, Wraps everybody up, take jobs, all the stuff they need, and the gym keeps them healthy, ready to go. Uh, we got Mr. Paul Oldershaw in the middle there. Blue shirt on. And away we go. Paul Heat number Oldershaw. three. He's he one of my faves. He, he is just, that guy puts a smile on your face every time he walks in the gym. Yeah. Dry sense of humor. Actually, he doesn't get to make it in the gym as much as he likes to. because as much of as work. I'd like him to. And me too. Yes. Um, um, but he signed up for the games. I'm so glad he did. So he's going to be joining us every Friday night. We're going to watch Paul Oldershaw to see at what minute he stops working. That's right. And actually, I remember Paul, when I introduced him to the burpee for the very first time, he struggled. Now, that's an interesting point to talk about. Sometimes our genetics force us to have strengths and weaknesses we oh, wish yes. we didn't have. So oh, because yes. Paul is a tall guy, it makes this movement and this workout a difficult one for him. For him to get all the way up and all the way down, it's further to go than, say, the person who's competing right beside him, Tara, with the red tank top, who's shorter. She's a shorter distance to cover. Always oh, Tara known around the gym for her inspirational headbands. That's true. Yes, lo lovely lady, great athlete. Tara Actually, I'm not sure if you know this, but uh, they just returned, her and her husband, who also oh, is a member yes. here, yes. from St. Thomas, a trip to St. Thomas, where they looked up CrossFit, and lo and behold, on St. Thomas Island, someone had opened up a CrossFit, opened with, or welcomed with open arms into the, a new gym, and they worked out there uh, all week, and they said they loved it. And it's a great experience to travel around because the movement is worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah. And Tara, another thing that I like about her is she came into the gym as a long distance runner, as did I. She was very nervous to pick up a weight. If I if I gain weight uh, in muscle, that means my my times on a race course will be will be longer. She put it to the test and did a half marathon before she started CrossFitting, and then CrossFit for about half a year, six months, went out, repeated a half marathon, and just demolished her time. So many stories like that come from the gym. We have a couple of triathletes right now are coming uh, specifically for triathlon training. Yep. Yeah, there are. There is a, a triathlon coach. I just.
just watched a video on him from Florida that is actually um, adopting CrossFit as their main method of training. And at first, the athletes were very resistant to this. They're used to spending 30, 40 hours uh, training a week, and CrossFit brought them down to 16 hours a week, and all their times got faster. We're about two and a half minutes in now, and you can see the pace starting to dwindle. Yeah, right not, about now. Not because of their athleticism or their lack of conditioning, simply because of the design of the workout. One constant movement for this duration of time, it's extremely difficult for the body to remain at the same pace. It's true, and you, that's why uh, you don't pace yourself. You do go strong out of the gate, but the, you know there will be a time that you will suffer. Uh, you know, one minute, maybe more than the next. For me, this morning, I would say I suffered in minute two when I realized how hard it was going to get. That's right. We have Tammy on the floor right now in the pink, uh, mother of three. She's just coming back from a year off. team taking strides this year getting so much stronger so much fitter great athlete to begin with but you can see right now the snake that's coming the pause between the sorry the pause before the jump up to the ring we can see the tall of this workout starting to take its effect that's right she's starting to instead of kick both her feet out in between each rep she's stepping back and this is a great actual this is actually a great thing to do when you're exhausted it's better than taking a break it's stepping in stepping out and it's totally you're totally allowed to do as that. As long as the shoulder, or sorry, as long as the chest and the hips touch the ground, any means necessary to get up and down are acceptable. And, ex and exactly, and because Tammy is not uh, not the tallest girl in the gym, uh, this is her workout. Actually, uh, she was one of my favorites to be the top woman in the gym. Right now, we've got Annie, who's got uh, 100 and 105 burpees, and she's the top female. And I had picked to Annie and Tammy to take this one tonight. That's right. We also have Greg Baker. Uh, former baseball player, he's in the end in the blue, um, crossfitting for how many years now? Uh, I would say two and a half years. Two and a half years, comes in, does what he has to do, and you can see him right now fighting to get to the end. Yeah, they've got about two and a half minutes left. Another neat story, Ever actually everybody in here is an interesting story in their own right, don't you think? Absolutely, there's so many different stories. There's so many stories. Greg um, crossfitted for about a, uh, a year. Uh, he's a baseball player. Started after baseball season ended. Went back to baseball after being crossfitting in the off season. Couldn't believe um, he had to buy a heavier bat by a bunch. It, he couldn't hit the ball anymore and his teammates said, I think you need a heavier bat. It's because his hips were so fast that his swing came around so fast he had to buy a bat that was way heavier than the one he usually used. Really cool. If you'll notice, with all the movement that's happening here today, the toll it takes on the hip. There's a full extension, there's a full open of the hip and a full close on the way down. The hip is the primary power source for the body. And when it's being taxed at such a volume as it is right now, everything from, from your arms, your shoulders, your lungs, your heart rate skyrocket through the roof. So breathing is very, very important it's to true. help regulate. Yeah, and, and every movement comes from the hips. If you think about viewers at home, when you pick up uh, a sleeping child off the ground, when uh, your son picks up his hockey bag, when you walk up the stairs, when you're vacuuming, all your when you hit a baseball, when you hit a golf ball, all that movement comes from your hips, and that's what uh, that's what all the movements in here do. They originate from the hips and they go elsewhere, out, outwards. What we're doing um, here tonight, you guys, is called the CrossFit Open. What happens is once all the scores are tallied from all over Canada, and we are actually in the Canada East Division, the top.
better than the workout you did before, though. Exactly. It's important, as you mentioned before, a lot of these athletes will come in and try to get this done one more time before Sunday night to try and see if they can better their score by a single repetition. The thing with CrossFit is every rep counts. Every second counts. So you think you did a great job. What did you get today? 88. 88. Let's say 88. Okay? You think that's the max I could do. Well, someone out there probably got 89, and that person who got 89 might finish three spaces ahead of you in the ranking. So getting that extra rep is, is, is very, very important. That's right. And these athletes have until Sunday to submit their scores. Then they'll wait a few days where they'll continue to train. And on Wednesday, they'll announce the next workout, and we'll be here next week doing something totally different. So we've cleaned up the floor a bit. We're going to measure uh, our next competitors, who we'll introduce you to. And we'll be right back with heat number four. We're at the CrossFit Open here at Reebok CrossFit Firepower. We've got heat number four just about to start. Who do we have? Well, uh, a lot of people. Yeah, it's uh, a big one. Yeah, we got, well, first of all, I have to speak to my man with my shirt off, Rod the Bot. Big thing in CrossFit is going shirts off. It's allowed. Kind of a uniform for, for, for most people is a pair of shorts and a pair of shoes. That is it. For the guys. For the Well, yes, for the guys. Girls, a sports bra. You will see a sports bra. Yeah, you will. And you don't see that in a regular gym. And if you do, it's for reasons. <laughs> it's not because they're so uncomfortable and they're so, they're so into their workout that they're ripping off their shirt. That's right. That's right. So in here, it's completely allowed no matter what your fitness level. Can I tell you what I love about the shirts off policy? What's that? It does not matter what your body looks like. That's right. Me too. We had a guy come in, first class, shirt off. Yeah. Christian? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. I love it. He's a newbie in here. Actually, I think he signed up. He should be here later to work out. Um, shirts off, I do believe. You do you ever take your shirt off? I've gone through phases. Okay. I, I can't, yeah, I can't remember, but... I'm in a shirts on phase right now. Okay. I, I just find you're putting yourself so far out there. You're so uncomfortable. You just want... It, it's almost a nuisance to have the shirt on. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So the heat started. We're in. We'll introduce you to our athletes. I just want to mention a few things. I did mention that the top 60 athletes uh, from our division, which is Canada East, which comprises uh, Ontario and East, Quebec and the Maritime Provinces, uh, will go to the regionals. The top group from there will then get a chance to compete at the 2012 CrossFit Games in California. Those are running July 13th to 15th this year. We've got lots of people heading down to California to watch the games. And it's it's called the, it's for the, it's the competition for the fittest man and woman on earth. Fittest on earth. You mentioned the time link. We're in what month is it? February. February. We're going, when is June? Yeah. July? Yeah. Long time, long time. So the, the stress that these athletes are under for that duration. That's right. The mental game, week in and week out, of staying focused, staying on task, making sure your diet is right, you're getting enough sleep, and that you're in the gym doing the right things to be able to even get to that point. It's true. It's a tall order. It is. And being a CrossFitter, it's, it's interesting if you think about it this way, compare them to an Olympian. An Olympian trains, you know, just as focused, just as smart, all year what it's going to be. You train all year for that 100 meter sprint. These athletes that go to the CrossFit Games, the events are not posted until they get there. They do not know what they will be, what events they will be competing in. Because we believe um, as a CrossFitter, you must be CrossFit, which means good at everything. So they can throw anything at you. Last year at the CrossFit Games, they threw a swim in, in they the ocean. They threw a ball toss. They threw a ball toss. Something as simple as that. So it's, it's training for the unknown CrossFit gym and, and gyms all over the world, you don't know what the workout's going to be until you walk into the gym and look at the board. We're just over two minutes in on this workout. We have Rebecca here just inside of Rod. Rebecca, this this might be her third or fourth time straight out of foundations. I know, she's brand new. God love her. She's wearing Signed the black up, pants, black, black shirt. Pants, black shirt. She was a little, I talked to her beforehand, she was a little nervous, uh, a little Yes. about how this was going to go. She was a little intimidated by the space, but 
You can't keep a good woman down. She'll get out there and she's gonna put forth a great effort, getting up and down, up and down, up and down. It's pretty. She is pretty cool. She's an 18-year-old athlete. She's uh, at high school here in town, and she is a puker. I have to admit because I did just train her in foundation. So you might see her your, your first one tonight. Um, but she pushes herself. She pushes herself way outside her comfort zone. And remember, these are regular people. These are people you see at. Uh, today. Nice. The story of Shoeless Joe Jackson. Yep. Irrelevant to what's happening right now. I just wanted to mention that. That's funny. It's my favorite movie. Very not irrelevant. <laughs> Greg Chan on the floor right now next to Rebecca. Uh, the only man I know who likes to rest in the bottom of a back squat. <laughs> He's a squatter. He Greg, is a squatter. Greg in the blue shirt there in the black shorts. Greg Chan. He also is probably uh, thinking he can attack this workout with the, come out with a pretty good number. As you see right now the workout's starting to get the better of him. We got three minutes left. He's just hit the wall and he's trying to work through that. Next to him, we got Tracy and Billy Bean, a married couple. She's a co uh, Hamilton police officer. That's right. And uh, they've been here for how long now? Uh, a, a, a year. A they year also so. have uh, their children also come into the CrossFit Kids program. Um, I know Tracy had an incident at work uh, a little over a year ago. Um, it was a physical incident and she was attacked by uh, someone on the street and she said that's not going to happen again I'm going to get stronger. She's been in here and she works so hard and she looks fantastic. She was a sprinter in high school and university and you can really see how that helps her in this kind of workout. Her car cardio conditioning is incredible. Absolutely. A lot of 911 emergency service workers uh, have taken a CrossFit along with the military simply because it's, it's extremely practical and you can do it anywhere. Yeah, anytime, you anywhere. And as I said just a second ago, we train for the unknown or an unknowable and in those specific 911 professions, you don't know what your day is going to be like. Are you going to have a long, a long jog to chase a guy five kilometers or is it going to be a short fight for your life? So the 911 services, uh, we also offer a discount for 911 services. So if you want to come in here and mention that and uh, you will also, you'll get a discount. Um, We're just under the two minute mark now. The pressure is on for these athletes as they try to push through, break down that wall and get to the end. That's right, I was just wanting to mention, now this is happening, these competitions are happening in CrossFit gyms all over the world right now. Uh, last year, um, they had about 30,000 athletes registered for the worldwide competition. This year it's almost doubled. We're at 55,000 athletes all over the world. And in this gym alone... It's almost as many friends as I have on Facebook. I'm off Facebook, I'm off Facebook. But um, in this gym alone, we have 110 join us uh, in the open and compete every Friday. That's a big number. Big jump from last year. Oh, look at Less that. Less than one minute, making sure every rep counts, pushing towards the end. You can see the judges really, really starting to increase their, uh, their, their yelling. That's right. And you can see uh, Rebecca there, it took her about three tries just to touch the ring. The rep would not have counted if she not touched the ring. So it's the judge's job to let you know shape at all. I think I need to go to another gym, get in shape and come back. 
I said, Ian, stick with never, it. Never, never have to do that. And he did stick with it. He did. And he's lost about 35 or 40 pounds. Um, everybody he knows is starting to notice at work, at home, um, at the rink. He's also a hockey dad, so a busy guy, and he still makes the time to get in here for his workouts. Great attitude Ian has. A lot. Yeah. And you see that a lot. There's a common vibe that happens in a gym like this where people come in with a smile on their face. And whatever's happening or had happened during the day, whether it be, whether it be family or at work, it all gets left at the door. They come in, they're focused on what they have to do, and they all have smiles on their faces by the time they leave. And I think Ian is a, is a great example of that. Someone who comes in, yes, for the first month he was here, he had pneumonia. He still came. Yeah, he, he did. Coughed. He coughed like he'd been smoking for 45 years, God bless him. Yeah, I think he struggles with that, but he has he has quit now. Um, that is true. Like today, uh, during my seven minutes of burpees, I couldn't think about the list of things I had to do at home, where I had to take my kids tonight, all the things I have to do on the weekend. All I could think about was my burpees. I was fully engaged in my workout, and that's where you get the best results. And it just forces you to fully engage in other aspects of your life, which always is a positive outcome. That's right, absolutely. Not to get too hokey on you. No, but it's true. It is true. It's true. Amazing things happen in here, and you guys are seeing this every week for five weeks on TV Kojiko. We'll be right back with the next heat. This is the last heat of the evening. Uh, I, I believe the top scores still are being held at 112 and 105, but we'll confirm that for you and we'll post them up. Who do we have in the last round? Well, uh, starting out on the outside, we have Chris. Chris is relatively new to the gym, but again, one of those stories, he's just taken to it. Uh, he's dedicated himself, known for showing up late for workouts. Uh, he has four children. He has four children. All right, That's we'll give him a break, yeah? That's all right, but well, we love him anyway. <laughs> Uh, he's one of those guys, he came in, he had one lift, he was, he was, he was a dead lift. Yep. He came in and that was a strong lift for him. The rest of it, he, he, he's still working on, as we all are, to get better. But that was kind of one of the things, and, and we see this a lot of foundations. You'll have one person with one strength, they come out of foundations feeling really good. I know I can do this. This is the one thing I have under control. I can do this. So no matter how bad a workout gets or no matter how many obstacles are thrown at you, you always have that one skill. That's true. It's you have your strengths and your weaknesses and you can love a workout and you can hate a workout because of that. But one thing's for sure, I haven't met many people that love burpees. So this is actually a good a good first law that equalizes everybody. Especially for this heat, we have a lot of people in here who are, are, are somewhat new to the gym and we have some That's people right. in here who have uh, openly expressed their disdain for burpees. It's true. And I also see we've got Mo beside Chris and Jason Cook. Um, beside him is Shane Lloyd. Uh, beside him is Brandon Smith. And beside Brandon, we've got Tito Rico. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that are really new to the gym and they're off. We started last heat. Here we go. Seven minutes. It's an all-male all male heat. Working at a pretty good pace right now. We have Mo, my man Mo, a uh, former rugby player. You can tell by those big tree trunks of legs. This is his name. Works up and down from the floor, getting up, touching that ring with two hands. It's true, and Mo's family has come to support him today. Mo's got two young children, and I noticed his son in the corner is doing burpees. Um, mimicking him over there. Do you see him over there? Look at that. Oh, oh yes. Isn't that great when you see the kids get into it? I don't, I don't think any of our viewers at home can see that. I feel bad for you guys. It's Trust pretty us, cute. it's happening. It's pretty cute. Um, Jason Cook, beside him, um, started at the gym with his wife, uh, Karen, who you'll probably see in one of the week's events. She's already competed tonight. Made headway. Big Huge time. Huge headway. Big time. So proud of her. It goes to show you, if you just show up, I always tell people this, because they say, it's so hard to show up, because I know it's going to be hard. And I said, if you can just drive your car to the gym, park it in a spot, and walk through the doors, everything else will take care of itself. It's the hardest thing, really. The hardest thing. Especially when you have to back in. Yeah, it's true. And it's busy tonight. It's hard to get a spot, so come early next week and come watch us. Interesting. Next to, ne next to him is Shane. Uh, Shane's going for the wide leg approach on the yep. burpee. You can see he's kicking his legs. He's in the gray, kicking his legs out nice and wide as he goes back. This is just to give him a little more stability to jump back up to his feet. As you can see, he's a bigger guy. Something like that definitely will serve him well in a workout like this. It's all about consistency and preservation. It's true. When you kick back, you can choose to either go feet wide or feet narrow. I tend to go into the feet narrow stance. Uh, 
Um, but it's also sometimes good to change it up. They say it is more efficient to keep your, your feet wide and you'll you'll be able to handle a quicker pace. Yes, bounding um, in and out. Yeah, and then beside him, Brandon, with the blue shirt on, um, also sort of new to the gym, him and his wife. Uh, you find it's a family affair when one person in a household starts crossfitting. Not long after that, we get the whole family in here. Uh, it's just because uh, it's infectious and good things happen to people that come inside our gym. So if you do uh, feel like this is something you'd like to try, um, give us a call, 905-864-9941, or you can email me, Kim, at Reebok CrossFit Firepower. We'll get you started right away. Uh, it's never too late if you're thinking, no way, I'm sitting on the couch right now eating a bag of cheese. It's never too late. We've seen some amazing changes uh, in people that thought that they were has been. Absolutely, absolutely. Tito underneath the bar right now. Tito's pretty new as well. Yep. Uh, he likes to wear gloves when he lifts weight a lot. He does. He's a glover. He's a glover. There are two types of crossfitters, the non-glove and the glove. Uh, predominantly, the non-glove takes the cake. Yeah, I'm a non-glover. Yeah, you, you whip your hands up a little bit, but it badges of honor. It's all worth it. That's what I say to people. It's all worth it. In fact, one time I was out of town doing a crossfit workout in a hotel gym. Someone stopped me and said, what are you training for? And I said, I, remember that. I know, and I said, life. Um, life. Because I can lift my kids uh, from a van fully asleep and carry them up two flights of stairs to their bed. And I can carry two hockey bags and a sleeping child at once. And these are things that I need to do in regular life. And they, I can do them with ease without injuring myself. About um, three, three minutes and 30 seconds left. If you look at Tito underneath the bar, yeah. a different style. He kicks his one leg out before the other. Almost as a brace. He's trying subconsciously feeling for the ground, trying to get his bearings, enabling him to push out of that bottom position more effectively. And so they're halfway through, so they're just at the part where their mind is not liking this very much. I find when you get three quarters of the way through, you can start to see the finish line, yes. and you can almost race to the finish. I should mention, I don't think we have any in this heat, but there, uh, there is a, the athletes are divided up in age divisions for the yes. CrossFit Games. Um, so 45 and older is considered masters, and we have a big group in here uh, that are 45 and older. They're competing for the masters competition. I'm really cold right now. <laughs> Next week we'll be wearing two. It's freezing in the gym. <laughs> be warned. Be warned. But the people that are working out right now are not. They are not. They, they are, are not. not. And now, to be honest, I'd rather be where we are than where they are right it's now. It's true. We did this earlier. We're done. Yes. I only want to do that once. The other thing that I wanted to mention, and you've mentioned it quite a bit tonight, is there's a team competition. So uh, some of the fittest athletes in the world can choose to go to the CrossFit Games as an individual and compete or as a group in a team-style competition. That's so they right. also hold that. Once the Open is closed and all the scores are in after the five weeks, those top athletes can then choose to join an affiliate team or go as an individual. With the affiliate teams, they're comprised of three, three men and three women who compete in workouts that are designed to utilize all members and all facets of CrossFit. So CrossFit really is a sport. It's uh, actually Forbes magazine came out and said it's the fastest growing sport in North America, and I would agree. Uh, because you actually compete every day. So just as you guys at home would sign up for a men's hockey league or a women's softball league, when you are a CrossFitter, you work out and compete against yourself and others at the same time. Absolutely. Just as we're seeing here right now, all these all these six gentlemen up here, although they are moving at a pace trying to get faster than the guy next to them, it's all about doing what you can do. That's right. Being better than you were the day before. That's right. As we approach the final minute mark. How exciting. You're going to hear, uh, since this is the last heat of the night, you're going to hear some excitement building as these guys try and get every last rep. Tito underneath the bar now opting for that wide jump. He's jumping his feet outside of his hands, wide outside of his hands, getting a little tired, but doing it correctly. You want to jump into a squat, essentially. Nice and wide base, allowing you to get up and touch that ring. And you can see the huge amount of support in the gym. It's so clear, both by the judges and the people standing by just observing. Pushing for that last minute as we count down. 45 seconds remain in this heat. It's such a positive Pick up the pace right now, getting up and down and up and down. Chris crawling on his hands awesome. and knees. Awesome. Bobo staggering up. Two-hand touch. His judge, Vicky Shembri, we saw competing earlier tonight.
game, forcing him to get back on the floor, calling him back down to the floor. 15 seconds left in this heat match. This is what it's about right now, pushing to the end. You can Where's hear the, the, end. You can feel the energy, you can, you can see the excitement. These guys are working so hard. They can just get two more seconds. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Tito beating the clock for that last rep, and that's what we talked about earlier, getting that last rep in. Until it's over. That's right. That's true. So we'll get those scores in for you guys and post those for you. Um, also, just something to mention: CrossFit isn't the only thing that that goes on in here. We also do boxing, and we have a kids CrossFit class that Mitch helps out with as well. Uh, we also rent a camp every June, and we do we head up north and we do CrossFit uh, all weekend at a CrossFit camp. If you'd like to get in here again, 905-864-9941. I'd really like to see you. Uh, I run the intro program along with Mitch, and I. Each one of you at home has the capacity to come in and you have what it takes for CrossFit. If you are a conscious human being, you have all it takes. It's true. It is. If you are awake and conscious, you can CrossFit. I manage to get in here every day. Every, it's true. And you see people come in not sure and here tonight you see them pushing as hard as you can and it just, it's inspiring and it makes me want to get in there and I can't wait for the next workout. I can. Uh -huh. <laughs> so next, next workout they're going to post will be in a few days and we'll be back for week two of the five week competition. Uh, it'll be something completely different. I, I would imagine you wouldn't even see a burpee in that competition. Probably not. Yeah, and it, and it will be a different time frame. Uh, CrossFit headquarters will probably launch something that is either less than seven minutes or more than seven minutes. They're testing us to see if we're good at everything. What do you, what do you predict? I predict some form of squat. Okay. Uh, front squat yes. and uh, box jumps. Okay. Yeah. And okay. we'll explain all these to you next week. Uh, come on in. Uh, give us a call if you'd like to observe first or if you'd like to try a class. We have some free classes too every week. Uh, again, we'll get those scores posted for you and we'll see who's on top for this week. Thanks for joining us this week here on Kojiko Television and at Reebok CrossFit Firepower. We'll see you next week.